Hey guys. <laughs> it's Thursday, May 12th, 2022. And it's been a tough day. Uh, it's been a tough day because Discord, Trust and Safety have um, taken down my both my account and the original increments with Saul server. And so I have lost all of the records of my past classes, which I did in Discord. I, I lost... <sighs> I lost a lot there. Now, I'm in the middle of appealing it. I appealed it last night as soon as I got the emails that showed me that I was disconnected. Like, I appealed it immediately and uh, I've been a little bit it's been a, uh, it's been moody, you know, I've been, I just, I can't, or that's how I felt uh, for the last couple days, or like, not even days, hours, right? Uh, it's pretty crappy to lose all of this work. So, hopefully, Discord will uh, listen to my extremely sincere and pretty long email uh, and respond human to human because I don't think I ever shared any intellectual property. Uh, I can now imagine what they're thinking of, you know, what, what might have been reported. Uh, at least I can imagine it. I've been generally trying to dissuade sharing things um, that are suspicious uh, on the server but if it but you know I mean I'm also I'm also learning through this process uh, I'm a very early stage creator quote unquote so I'm kind of just uh, figuring out what the limits are and figuring out also you know what is upright or appropriate and I want to I want to keep the focus on genuine educational academic intellectual growth for my students and for all of you guys <sighs> it's a little depressing though to be honest it's depressing that my discord server is all gone there are so many <laughs> memories and people that like oh man now, obviously, all of the new people who've been joining and who've been active recently, you know, you guys can probably just find this YouTube video and come right back in. But the record of all my previous channels are all gone. And all of my, all of my, um, all of my uh, activity on all my other servers are all gone now, you know. Uh, dude, it's like I, don't, I didn't share anything. So I don't know why my account had to get disabled. It's in, uh, that's insane. And I can imagine why they would, you know, lock down a server, uh, because now I can imagine what they were thinking of. But this seems like it seems a little overly harsh for someone's first offense. You know what I mean? It's my first offense. You could at least have like an educational intermediate step, telling like a warning step to tell me what's going on. It's also my account has been around for more than two, I think, two years, and I've never. Oh, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Ah, it's so frustrating. I've had my Discord account for two years. Three, I maybe, but at least two, right? Hang on, let me let me just double check. Twenty. At least two, if not three or four, you know. And I had a good username and everything. Uh, HM plays. They 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 took down my. Discord server and account. It was my first offense after maybe probably three years. <sighs> All of my records are gone right now. Uh, it's so annoying. <sighs> yeah, now that I'm just like I've you know I've I took a long time writing that email yesterday, and now I'm. Now I'm, uh, uh, 
and I wrote, uh, and then I wrote an email to the, the the refund team to deal with the Nitro subscription, and now I'm just sort of trying to process, like what to do. You know, I'm hoping that trust and service, trust and security, will, or trust and whatever they're called, are going to just deal with me as a human being. You know, instead of I know that from trust and trust and safety perspective. Like Saul Lee might be a real person or might not, and actually, like ninety nine percent chance, you know, it's just some sort of scumbag, like bot or something. I, I understand that reasoning, so I don't, I'm, I don't, I know why they're being harsh, and I'm sure they didn't delete all my data yet or anything crazy like that. But, but it's such a crappy experience. I kind of wish they could would have like a, they would have like a like a inbuilt logic where if a if a account has been active not just a dead account but like an active account that's been around for like a significant amount of time like longer than a couple months mine has been around for years you know and then it has and then there's a first violation you know then they could they could you know go into a warning situation instead of an insta ban you know that's insane to me that they treat their uh their their, their, their basically they're customers, okay, because these kids, right, are paying for Nitro all the time. But also the creators, the the community leaders, you know, like me. I'm not only am I paying for Nitro, I'm also trying to build a positive community on Discord. I, I just it's it's it, it's beyond me really um, for a first violation for them to do that. Uh, the reason was uh, they said that they said that I shared intellectual property, which I don't recall doing. Uh, but even if I did, even if I did, I kind of just, you know, a warning. A warning seems reasonable. Uh, so, uh, HM, I think that must be HM Plays. Thanks for joining the Discord server. I see you. <laughs> uh, anyway, I am, I am going to start on the SAT uh, pretty soon. But right now, I just have all this negative emotion built up over the last, like, 20 hours it was about 20 hours that I got the first uh, kick out email um, and I've been trying different things and I've been trying to keep myself motivated but you know I just knew I want to sort of get this out of my system um, I think I'll probably start the I'll, I'll, I'll start the SAT soon though I'll start it within like 10 15 minutes get some water get things going <sighs> yeah like uh, and just to expand on that point, HM, uh, it's just that like obviously if I have if I write like a script and I can like create a bunch of Discord accounts or whatever like fake accounts, and immediately I start doing sketchy things, you know, like if if my account was only like one week old or like one day old even, right? That and okay, Instaban, whatever, right? But my my account has been around for years, you know what I mean? Uh, it's First, the first violation. It's first violation that I don't even fully know if I violated. You know, it's like, did I violate? Like, what? You know, so very frustrating. Intellectual property. I'm just not. I'm not gonna get into that detail right now. I've already talked about it in the office hours uh, stream earlier today. So I don't want to get into the thick of it. Here's just my me just venting about my situation. Uh, the situation that I find myself in, uh, but if you, um, but I did type out, I did type out uh, a little bit of the situation in Discord, so we can talk about the details in the Discord server. On the stream, though, I just want to keep it surface level. <sighs> anyway, guys, uh, I see that some of you guys are in this, uh, are in the. Um, uh, <laughs> stream by the way guys if anyone does watch uh this stream later on and if you were also in the server and you were affected uh i'm very very curious what actually happened to your account and if you know you you guys are all good because uh, i am worried for you guys because uh, you know it must it might be a little scarier for you guys uh, who are in high school still just dealing with things like this for me it feels more like an administrative matter because i kind of know how these companies are, I mean, I can at least imagine how they're operating, but for you guys, it might feel like a much bigger problem. And also, I'm sure that you guys also feel, um, you know, if your Discord account were to get banned, I'm sure that would be pretty 
uh, like you, you've probably built up a lot of personal meaning to your Discord, right? For me, Discord is kind of like a side thing. You know, I'm like a boomer compared to you guys. So I just have a Discord on the side. Uh, but for you guys, I know Discord, uh, for some of you guys, I know that Discord is a major part of your, your like day-to-day -day life. So, so yeah, if, you, if something happened to you guys, uh, let me know. I, or at least I'm, 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 I'm willing to hear out what happened to you guys. Just jump into the new Discord server for now. Uh, the temp hopefully a temporary Discord server. Hopefully we can just revert back to the old server. Okay, but jump into jump into the new temporary Discord server, and yeah, and we can commiserate. You guys know that word, commiserate. I'm gonna type it out here. Commiserate. All right, well, it's probably about time to get started on the SAT. I'm done. I feel a little better now that I've explained in full sentences my own predicament and uh, <laughs> my struggles. <laughs> my struggles. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring some water over, uh, something to just to keep me <laughs> hydrated and feeling fresh. Uh, and I'll start streaming the SAT. You know what? I need you know I need a bathroom break, and also I can tell that my my brother's gonna uh, be leaving the house and stuff. So uh, I'll start the actual SAT stream in um, let's say seven minutes max. Okay, it's five thirty three here in the East Coast where I am. So by five forty, I'll be starting the uh, SAT. Here, you know what? I'll actually even update this real quick what's this this is the 2019 march oops march us test okay uh starting in starting four. all right let me uh i'll be back uh after doing after taking care of myself, I'll get ready to start streaming soon. All right. Hang on, how come my shortcuts are not working? <laughs> okay, that's my shortcut, there we go. All right, I'm gonna do a quick uh, dinner order so that my dinner comes in in like an hour. <laughs> Should I order? Uh, I'm back in Brooklyn, first night, first dinner. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What should I order?
something to make me something something uplifting <laughs> let me think you know i think i should probably keep this going because it clarifies when i'm going to start guys i'm going to start in like three minutes after i order this food Do I want Thai food? I think I do. I think I want Thai food. I kind of forgot what taste, like, it's only been like 10 days since I was in Brooklyn, but I kind of forgot what was good here. Okay. Let me think. Oh, I forgot to connect the chat to the stream. I'll connect that in a second after after I do this. Should I just do the whitest thing? Should I just get pad thai? <laughs> Thirteen dollar pad thai. Should I do it? Hmm. Fried chicken over rice. You know, I'm going to do that with papaya salad. Let's do it. Papaya salad and fried chicken over rice. Gao mun gai to. Does gai mean chicken? It must. It's almost the same as Vietnamese, right? Here we go. Okay, my dinner should come in probably like an hour. So that's perfect. Now I can actually get into <laughs> the SAT. <sighs> All right, here we go. Where's March? March 2019, PDF expert. Oh, dude, I forgot to clear this out. So I actually never, I never took, I never took this test. So this is still just me setting up. Uh, it's gonna take me another minute to be properly ready. I actually don't know how to just like clear all markings. Is there like a easy way to clear all markings? Um, I never took this test. It was, this is just, uh, I remember doing this fairly recently. I, um, I was just, uh, what do you call it? Um, like demonstrating. I was just trying to uh, explain to uh, one of my students like how to do this thing that I was trying to explain. So let me just clear all this out. Because I, I, yeah, I've actually, I think I've never read this in my life, not even once. So. Yeah, all these markings are just for example, just to make a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No other markings, I think. Okay, some markings over here. Let me get rid of those. Oh, maybe I, did I solve that? Interesting. Oh, the writing I have seen before. 
the writing I have seen before. Okay, so now I'm coming up to March 2019. <laughs> Look at this. That is so clearly a PDF made in some other country. <laughs> anyway, so nice. Now I have a clean copy. And I am ready. So now we're getting into the real stream. Okay. Might as well leave a little time marker. Okay. Real SAT stream starts 26 minutes in. <laughs> All right. Uh, as with last time, I'm not really going to talk. Okay, I'm not really going to talk. I'm mainly just going to, um, what do you call it? Uh, I'm just going to go through it. Why is this not working? What's hole? What is that? Okay, that doesn't work for some reason. Uh, forget it. Well, so as with last time, I'm not going to really um, like do Q&A in between the passages. Uh, I will be talking as much as possible to explain what's in my head. And I will pause the time only for one thing, okay, which is the map of the passage after each passage. Okay, I'm going to do that uh, because I think that's still a good thing uh, for, you know, viewers to watch. So I'm going to do the map of the passage, but nothing else, uh, which means that everything else will be timed. And then at the very end of 65 minutes, I'll actually do any Q&A if people are there and ask any questions. Okay, uh, you can uh, you can ask questions. Uh, you can ask questions throughout the whole time. Uh, just like leave a leave like a um, what do you call it? Leave like. I'm not gonna remember what question you're talking about unless you say specifically on question 11 or something like that, or on the first passage in line 15, what does that mean, right? If you ask questions like that, then after I finish the test, I can go back and answer those questions for you, okay? But I won't be able to do that during the test, uh, unless it's like a quick one-off. Like if I see it, and if it's really easy for me to answer within time, within the 65 minute time limit, I may still do it, but generally speaking, don't, bet on me doing that okay so let me just connect the youtube chat because i'm actually starting now so give me one second to do this little last bit of setup and we're about to go you should be able to see the chat soon all right. Wait, have I seen this before? I don't think so. Read a dove? Old cello? Maybe I have like a long time ago, like a, like a year ago. I, I feel like I might've seen this a long time ago, uh, but I don't remember. Uh, so here we go. Okay, guided access is started. Three, two, one, let's go. She had not paid, serious. Okay, we're having a cello. We have Virginia as the name. We're after a move, we're after a move. Okay, so she's older, because it's an old cello. Since college, okay, she's an adult. So she hasn't touched this in maybe even like a decade. Beatles songs. Oh, that's not important. Uh, that wasn't real music. Music that made you, real music makes you forget where you were. Makes you forget. She loved music no longer. She had started started when she was nine. Okay, 
after the move to Arizona. At the beginning of the school year in Akron, which is not in Arizona. Is that Arizona? Okay, that must be Arizona. A tonette. She liked the neatness of the ton tonette. How it fit. Whenever she covered a finger hole, she felt the contour of its slightly raised lid. A tentacle. That's kind of interesting. Interesting image. She had chafed through months of scales and songs, waiting to go across the attic interior. She wanted to choose, kneel among the rows, black cases, undo the metal class, flung. Right, her in, to choose the instrument, the cello itself, a flute or clarinet, half buried. But she wasn't even thinking of the cello at first. That's interesting. Half buried in a deep blue velvet. But before she could make her choice, they moved to Arizona. See, okay, that's what was. Akron is in Ohio. Akron is not in Ohio. To Arizona. Okay, so this is actually pretty confusing setting-wise. You have to be aware of the setting. Stored in a classroom trailer, when she opened the flute case, silver, the clarinet was worse. Glaring. Okay, it's just... She, in Arizona... There's in Akron, there, it was so much more developed. Arizona had much worse music programs. The strings. Violoncello. A child size android? Okay, that's, is that what a violoncello looks like? Accepted the instrument. Hang on, what? Oh, violoncello is a oh is a cello, I think. Okay, I guess a cello lo does look like a human being. It's pretty large, right? Nearly a year just to hold it. A year just to hold it. Edge when something, maybe a shadow. Huh, what? So the bedroom is a uh, this but one weekend, okay. A shadow, some some magical connection right now. Her want to do yeah, something, yeah, there we go. We're looking at the visual aspects of this. She's visually accepting the cello. Rounded like a belly of a tiger. She had to tame it, to love, to not be scared of it. On its hind legs, press its torso to hers. One paw curled like a ribbon behind her left ear. Okay, it was heavy. So this is this tiger that's standing. Heavy, okay. Funny how fantasy works. Now we're shifting back to the current Virginia. And she unsnaps it. All right, 450, pause. So, uh... I would say here is my map of the passage. Uh, it's three columns. First column, we have Virginia. She opens up this cello after a move. Okay, we get that from the blurb. She discovers this cello after some move. We don't know where she moved to. Um, and... Uh, Wow, she hadn't touched it in forever. We don't know how long, but it wasn't since college. And by the way, the little accompaniments with her friends, that doesn't count. Okay, what? She hasn't done real music in forever. Real music is the thing that makes you forget about everything else. She hasn't had that in forever. 
That's the feeling right there. Some sort of nostalgic feeling. She started when she was a kid, you know, when uh, she had like this tonette before the move to Arizona or something like that in fourth grade. Uh, she worked with this tonette. I feel like there was something right before that and I can't remember. But anyway, um, uh, and this tonette, she kind of loved it. She loved how neat and whatever, you know, how to fit into her desk and the whatnots, okay? But then what happens after that is she, uh, uh, hang on, uh, i trying to remember. She, uh, oh, and, and so she's anticipating, and she's just really excited for the day that she gets to choose her own instrument in fourth grade back in Akron, where, um, 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 in Akron, where like she's imagining like the blue velvet, where the clarinet, or like the flute will come out, and she's gonna choose it for herself, which is like by the way amazing, you know, as an elementary school student to be able to do that. Uh, I don't think I could do that until like middle school. Anyway, uh, in Las Vegas, you know, which is like close to Arizona. But then she moves. Before she can do that, now we're moving to a second column. She moves as a kid to Arizona. And in Arizona, she doesn't get that blue velvet. She gets this sort of gaudy steel thing with the clarinet and the flute. So she, she doesn't choose them. Uh, the teacher then says, in Arizona says, well, that leaves the strings. And then, which, and then she, in, back in the past, you know, when she was a kid, she's looking at all these string instruments and she goes, settles on the violon, violoncello, which I think is just a cello, which I didn't know. Uh, and, uh, and it looks like an Android, it's huge. It's not like a guitar, it's huge, okay? It's, um, so at first it was intimidating, but she decides it's the right instrument for her for some reason that I don't remember in that column. Well, at the bottom of that second column, what happens is she, uh, one day, uh, she, uh, she's already had this habit of practicing after school, but one day she actually pads it in like pillows or whatever in her bedroom. And um, some magical thing happens where the shadows maybe kind of made it occur to her that actually she's going to do it right this time. She's going to practice it right. It's, uh, so we're moving to a third column and it says, uh, it says, uh, she's like seeing the striations, right? Which is like the stripes, the striations on like the back or like how the back is curved. She never noticed that the back was curved before. It's curved like the belly of a tiger. Right, and there are these striations of it on it, right? Stri like these like sideways stripes on it, which leads into a tiger image. And this tiger has this like belly on her, and it's like the, the through the neck on the whatever, right? It's this crazy image of a of a tiger that she's hugging, and she's gonna tame it. This is the third column. She's gonna tame it. It's heavy, but she's gonna tame it, something like that. And that's the end of the paragraph. And I think this is the final paragraph. She goes something like, funny how memory works. We, we like zoomed right back into the present. Now we're right back into the present. It's in italics, it's, we're, on, we're in our thoughts. Zoomed right back into the present. Funny how memory works. And then she picks up the motherfucking cello. <laughs> It's actually pretty dramatic. I think to, I think the most difficult thing about this particular passage is the setting shifts. You have to be aware of the setting because uh, the conflict resolution is not too crazy here as long as you understand that it's really just about uh, the dissonance of loving this, ch like of having a previous, uh, it's, it's about nostalgia, you know, uh, a nostalgic connection to something in the past that's no longer in the present, okay? So exploring that nostalgia, as long as you're focused on that, Conflict resolution is not hard at all, but it's just the setting shifts. Okay, so that was the first passage. That was my map of the passage, totally from memory. Uh, compare yours to mine. Let me know how you did. Okay, here we go. Oh, and actually, I'm going to type this out into in the chat because people keep coming and going. Uh, but you guys can ask questions. 
throughout the throughout the um, stream if you join uh, I will not answer them most likely I will not answer them during the real stream because the timing is tough for me uh, I will probably come afterwards just let me know what question you're talking about what passage you're talking about so um, feel free to ask questions uh, I'll answer them if I can in real time if I can manage uh, other otherwise uh, I'll, I'll come back to them at the end of the 65 minutes uh, to make make the Q&A smooth include question number okay so yeah please include like the question number or like the passage like which passage it is which line question and line numbers I guess question or line numbers okay uh, so that at least when I go back I can at least know what you're talking about um, the more specific you are with your questions the better okay I am going into I'm gonna I'm at 450 I'm at 450 okay restarting time three hang on my Apple pencil give me a sec restarting time three two one let's go made you forget primarily serves to emphasize the power of the music of real music no not Beatles faded no regret no okay 505 that was 15 seconds uh, in the passage the description of the experience with the tonette illustrates which aspect her beginnings early interest and commitment to yeah her beginnings that's 520 that was also 15 seconds uh, as used in line 38 housed 38 housed probably the blue velvet right 38 Wait, is it 28? I lost track. 38, 38, 38, 38. They were housed in, where are they housed? Where were they housed? They were housed in the main building. Noonday Blaze into the main, where they were stored. Oh, 20, oh my God, I have to, I think it's stored though. Let's look at 27, 27. Stored in a trailer, housed in the building. That makes sense. So I'm gonna go with that, although I wanna come back to that just to double check, okay? Uh, but I probably won't, because I'm pretty confident on that. Based on the passage, which choice best describes the reaction to the flute and the Disgusted. Uh, quality, uh, yeah, but not the sound though. Conditions, concerned about the conditions, difficulty, no. Okay, let's look at the clarinet. Was it specifically the clarinet? The clarinet was worse. It looked like sound. Oh, sounded. Oh, I see. I see. I see. We did look at the sound. I. Uh, oh, dude, my food's already here. Pause. Sorry, guys. That was really fast. Holy crap. Pause. I'll be right back, guys. Hey. Uh, yeah. Come up the second floor. Yeah, that's for me, dude. <laughs> I was expecting my delivery to come in an hour. I thought it would come at the end of the test. <laughs> it came at the first passage. Holy crap, that was fast. <laughs> Jeez. Um, guys, I won't be able to focus until the, the guy actually delivers. Uh, so just, just give me give me like five minutes all right maximum five i mean it won't take five minutes but uh up to five minutes just to just to deal with this situation <laughs> dude that was crazy fast hang on i have to keep my mind off of, off of this i need to do something else so that i don't like i don't cheat the time um Should I do Wordle? <laughs> I 
Might as well. I'm gonna do Wordle until this guy comes. Um, cream. Wow. Soupy. Wow. Stuff. Uh, no. C. C. We already use C. Oh, it's really hard on keyboard because keyboard. It's hard to know which letters are even. Uh, sh 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 shunt, shunt. Scoon, scum, sh sh slum, mm, <laughs> Wait, what comes after spoon, uh, sl skewn, uh, Swoon, Swanny, Swin, Swan. Yeah, I think the guy is having trouble finding. Slunk. Slunk is a word. Go for it. Slunt. Wait, what? Slung uh, with a G. Yeah. All right. I'm still waiting for my delivery, who should be here already. I don't know why he's taking so long, uh, but I just want, I just don't want to uh, go back and forth uh, on the passage, so I'm just w killing some time until the delivery gets to the second floor. Okay, that was Wordle. Which I'll share to the new server, which has two people. <laughs> I should share that to random, I guess. Guys, if you were in the old Discord server and you wanna join, uh, the temporary one for now, uh, please uh, find the link in the description below. Hmm. Kind of just curious why it's taking so long to go from the first floor to the second floor. Give me a sec. Hey guys, let me just uh, try to deal with this. Uh, so, I'll be back after a quick break.
All right, guys. Sorry about that delay. Uh, that dis uh, that delivery was just crazy fast, and then suddenly extremely slow. <laughs> so that it took as much time for uh, the delivery to come from the first floor to the second floor as it did to to actually get to the building. Uh, I'm at 6:40 right now, so uh, I'll finish off. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna finish off this passage and move on to the second passage starting Okay, here we three two one. Let's go She allows herself to be Assigned because it's not the, is it the last one? No, it's she's reluctant. She's reluctant. I think that's right um, She accepted Because of the Im impatience Okay, she was yeah, cuz she's saying no to every she's saying no to every thing to every other choice so that makes sense i actually didn't fully understand that when i first read that i'm just double checking this because i was confused yeah she's repelled by the sound of the clarinet exactly so uh in the passage the narrator suggests that she perceives a relationship between which aspects uh wait what's sound and Appearance? Call name and sound? Name and sound? Is that is that in the first thing over here? The name and the sound? By ver oh sonorous name. Okay, thirty nine. Okay, that got, got it. Thirty nine. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. Is it for thirty four, thirty eight, or is it after that? Thirty four, thirty eight would make sense. No, so let's go to 44. Uh, the sound of its name was synonymous with the complaint, cumbersome body. Okay, that's 48.44. That took me some time, 8.30 to get through. In the sixth paragraph, suggests that Virginia needed to recognize, recognize the need to change her attitude towards, to firm commitment, yeah, to like, hey, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen to do things right. And uh, that's to make it happen. Which line is that? That's uh, 57. Wait, is that the right? She to the her body? She got a ship. No, that's not correct. That's not correct. Also, I need to show in this one, I also need to show the uncertainty. Where's the uncertainty? Okay, to love and not be scared. Okay, from being overwhelmed to not being, from being overwhelmed to. Okay, that's here. Oh, why, why is my okay? So that's definitely. I was looking at the wrong one. Okay. Um. Yeah. To love and not be first. Sixty-six to sixty-eight must be correct. I'm losing time because it's really it's really uh, cumbersome right now to do this uh, back and forth right now with the PDF, but whatever. In the context of the passage as a whole, in the context of the passage as a whole, the italicized sentences, 72, 73, mainly serve two. Oh, it's a uh, sh shift setting. New? Nope. Uh, yep. 1030s. Now moving on to the next passage, I'm confident in all of those except that one that I kind of want to double check, but Svoda, a hero, selflessness, the surprising science of selflessness. Now for this, you could usually figure out the things, okay? Generous boosts your mood and health, yeah? See, that, that already tells me the conclusion, okay? Being generous, being selfless is good. Altruism and well-being 
Okay, Schwartz, CS, in 1999, divided multiple sclerosis patients into two groups, had members of one group call the other regularly, okay, to provide emotional support. After tracking for three years, which is actually pretty long, uh, she found that the callers had better self-worth and mood. Okay, yeah. They, they were blossoming to become a positive force, not a victim. Cool. In 2010 survey, so this is, we're just going over past research. Uh, 4,500 volunteers, okay? Over here we had sclerosis, multiple sclerosis. 89%, yeah, well-being. Sizable majority report and stress levels. Purpose. Regardless of culture. Great follow-up. Okay, we're doing non-WASP studies. Okay. Volunteering helps. Best case scenarios, regular help. Stave off early death even. Okay, so it even has a biological effect. So there's some sort of other study. We don't know what year this is, but we have AH and CT, okay? And then we have the survey. Survival, connects with survival. 19% lower mortality risk. I'm jumping around because I, I just am. Even more dramatically, um, okay, even more dramatically, 420, this is the University of Michigan ones. Um, those who helped others were 60% less likely to die during the period. <laughs> For five years, crazy. Okay, now we have a big transition. We have the opposite. Oh no, it's not even an opposite, no, SL. Real world setting. Okay, no more surveys, let's get actual. Okay, let's test it, okay? Random acts of kindness for six weeks. Happiness. Whoa. Whoa. Isolated acts. You want to do it, okay, really doing something significant. Stress. Okay, and then we have the biological connection at the very end. We're at 1455. Stop. All right, here's my map of the passage. Here's my map of the passage. <laughs> 1455, by the way, that's, how many minutes was that, actually? Let me just double check. Uh, it's pretty fast. I read in less than five minutes. Um, maybe a little too fast. Let's see how much I remember. Map of the passage. So we have a lot of studies, honestly. It's actually a little overwhelming because there's so many studies. But... Um, we have long known the connection between mood, well-being, and generos uh, and altruism, altruism and generosity, uh, well, tr altruism and well-being. Okay, we have long known this. I think that's the first sentence. After that, we get into first example, and the first example 
is multiple sclerosis patients divided into two groups, 1999, I think. And over like a couple years, they were like three years or something, they were told, uh, one of the groups was told to call the other to help them with emotional support and they turned out to be happier. Then we have a survey, big survey, uh, that's still like the top left. We have a big survey of like 400 something, 100 something people and uh, they uh, report more happiness for something. I don't fully remember that one, okay? Then we have, I think, a University of Michigan study. Uh, multiple sclerosis, but da, da, da. we have the at the something we have we have something surprising because we have a University of Michigan study where they're older couples, okay, they're seniors, they're like closer to death, um, and for five years, for five years, these couples do something that have something to do with altruistic behavior, and they are 60% less likely to die within those five years. So it suggests that it doesn't only help with mood or sensible or purpose, it also helps with actual biological like survival rates. And then there's something even more dramatic, and I don't remember what the more dramatic study was. Okay, bunch of studies, don't remember it though. Uh, before that, I feel like there was something about stress. Okay, was it students? Was, were there, were, were, was there a study with students or something like that? I don't fully remember. Okay, and I think we're at the bottom. Uh, at the bottom, no, the, uh, the students come out the, at the bottom. I've, so before that, I don't know what there was, but I feel like there was something. But after that, you know, the more dramatic, and I don't remember the more dramatic, and then we get the bottom, and then we get the students. And uh, with the students, what we get is um, we have them all, we want to see actual experimental results, not just a bunch of surveys. So where people, we don't want to just have surveys of how happy they are. We want to have them actually do things, you know, like an actual experiment. So which is, by the way, kind of similar to the first one. It's like the multiple sclerosis one, so I'm kind of confused by that framing, but whatever. Uh, the students do random acts of kindness for six weeks or something like that, and um, weirdly, it's successful, but weirdly, it's not, it's really only successful when they do it regularly at the same day or something like that. When they, when they mix up the days and it's kind of sporadic, um, then it doesn't really increase their happiness. Uh, and then the hypothesis is that, you know, it really feels significant, okay, only if you do it frequently, which is, I think, kind of a weird reasoning. I think I could think of a better reasoning than that, but that's just me, okay? But that's the reasoning of that, of that group. At the end, we talk about how biological factors might be at play. Okay, so this is a pretty unusual science passage in that it's just a big survey of all of the different studies that of a bunch of different studies that have been out there and then at the very end we talk about the reasoning uh, it's it's a little unusual for the qu sheer quantity of the different studies that that are there okay uh, not a lot of discussion until the very end and it's just like bare biological mechanisms okay that's all it is but what is interesting about this passage is how it talks about like survival rates that's surprising to me uh, so that's my map of the passage. Okay, uh, how did yours do compared to mine? Here we go. I'm gonna restart time and get into the questions, get into the questions. Three, oh, I'm gonna have to do this first actually. So three, two, one, let's go. 2010 survey, 4,500 American adults volunteered. 2010 survey. And eight, six, a lot of people agreed, physically healthier, well-being, stress, and purpose. Cool. And this is the highest. This is also really high. Six-week period for three groups. This is probably the last, this is the last one. Um, oh, well-being doesn't change. 
much at all, or it actually got went negative. Wow. A single day? Oh, I... What? That's different from what I remembered. End of the experiment. Okay, 1605. That's different from what I remembered, though. Let me go double check. Oh. Every week, though? All five kinds. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. That's very different from how I interpreted it, but that definitely helped. Uh, based on the passage, by the way, that was 1630. Uh, so I just want to keep... Tr Which choice best describes the relationship between emotional support and well-being? Uh, givers increase well-being. Well, and reported no change, we don't know. I don't think we know. Schwartz. Okay, yep. And th this is the 2010 one. This is the second one. Okay. Oh, the Maori one. I, that's the one I forgot. Okay. Positive, 16, positive. Let's look, 16, positive. Uh, enable them to be a positive, a beneficial? Sure, yeah, beneficial, 1715. Uh, associations, 42 most nearly means, 42 most nearly means, up uh, at the bottom over here, 42. Uh, connections, uh, uh, correlations, uh, links, 1735, okay. If true, which finding would most undermine the author's interpretation of the L survey. Now, L, I think, was that on the right side? Okay, right. SL over here, okay. So, okay, this is the author's thoughts, okay? The work suggests means this is the author's thoughts. Frequent, okay. Okay. Frequency, so when more than five, we talk about infrequent. Uh, what, what would be, we need to go not with frequency, okay? Occasional, actually, result in loss. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's 1850. Quotation from B, 6164. Quotation from B. It could be very, that there's a very short bump. Okay, because that's just uh, for support, uh, for the reasoning, support for the reasoning. Um, no, we're not intending, it could be. No, we're not. Provide a, yeah. Yep. We're explaining the L study, so SL study. We're not comparing. This most strongly supports, suggests that people who perform altruistic acts benefit partly because. Because it gives them a sense of purpose. Uh, yeah, I guess it's also, wait, merely think? That's kind of weird. Let's check the bottom right. No. Strengthens your sense that you're doing something significant is kind of the focus, right? It's, we have two, we have to do two of them. Okay, we're looking at three to eight and then 57 to 71. I gotta, I gotta do this, but let's look at three to eight. Yeah, this is a specific. 
that's too specific. Let's start down here. Okay. 65 to 67 is the one I'm focusing on. Let's see, is that there? Yeah, because all the other ones are kind of too specific. The effect, not feedback or approval. Not feedback or approval for sure. Dude, this is not good work. I would not say effect though. Okay, but it's the only thing that's left. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna move on. 21, 15. Highest principles agreed that volunteering has um, sense of purpose. Okay, for 2130. So, majority of server respondents in figure one. We don't talk about empathy. Hang on. Also, let's double check the background of this 2010 survey. Nearly 9 10. Sizable majority reported lower the stress, stress levels. And it's also connect, it's independent of culture. Stress levels. Yep. Oxytocin? Disagreed? No, not about agreement or disagreement. Okay, so let's look at stress levels. Because um, the hormones at the very end talks about mute our stress response, release fewer stress hormones, that's 72 to 74. Yeah. Cool, so that's uh, 2250. <sighs> and then, say it's the relationship between the two figures in the passage. Challenge, nope. Specific, yep, they're from the studies. And then that's 2305. Okay, moving on to the third passage, here we go. The bionic leaf, the, what does bionic leaf mean in 2015? Bionic leaf converts solar energy into fuel. Okay. The work, a proof of concept in biomanufacturing. Crazy. Proof of collaboration between Professor uh, P.S. and D.N. Okay. It's a collaborative interdisciplinary science thing. Practical application in remote locales. Interesting. In the developing world. <coughs> Excuse me. I see. It's an artificial leaf. Okay, interesting. Fuel source in the bionic leaf works by sandwiching. So this is the artificial leaf, by the way. Sandwiching of a photovoltaic cell between two metal oxide catalysts, okay? Cell and catalyst. In a glass of water, when submerged, submerged, immersed, submerged, at normal, at, so temperature and pressure can affect this so to some extent. The leaf mimics photosynthesis. Current from the wafer. This wafer is um, solar wafer. Is the wafer the same as the cell, which splits? Is the wafer the same as the cell? With split water molecules. So oxygen and hydrogen come come out. Has been perfecting it since t 2011. Efficient, more efficient than a plant. Of the technology, which is improving. Okay, 
Wow, that's very technical. I'm at 25, 2540, by the way. That was extremely technical. That took me, what, two minutes here? Three minutes almost just to get to here. The hydrogen it produces versatile fuel from a chemical standpoint, reports. The hydrogen is the fuel. Okay, that's cool. Not the oxygen, obviously. And could it, it could become the basis of a fuel cell because it's a gas. Okay. And hence, the bionic leaf creates liquid. That's the significance. That's the significance, okay? The hydrogen gas is fed to a biologically, um, metabolic, okay, so this is, okay, so then it goes from the, so this is just the next phase. This is phase two, okay? Bacterium called RE, eutropha, the bacteria combine hydrogen with carbon dioxide, with carbon dioxide, okay? And then through a trick of, okay, some other person's uh, help uh, technology, it produces isopropanol, which can be burned in an engine, like ethanol. It's like ethanol. It's not the same as ethanol. Whew, crazy. All right, now we're moving on to uh, discussion. The advantage is you have an unprecedented platform that you don't have with inorganic cat. Okay, compared to inorganic catalysts, it's better. It's bionic. It's biological and inorganic at the same time. It's life produced catalyst capable of making chemical modification complement with surgical many times at room temperature. If you can use enzymes for producing chemicals, you can use Ooh, open the door to many other things such as these, okay? Silver's lab. Who's silver again? Uh, Pamela Silver. Okay, silver. Okay, by the way, I'm at 27.55. So it's taking me a long time to read this. There's a perfect, we're, the tricky interface between the catalyst and the bacteria. So we're balancing the inorganic and the organic. Thriving, growing, the first iteration of bionic leaf matches the efficiency of photosynthesis. In the first iteration, match the plants. Now, we're trying to do it better. Cologne? Who's Cologne? Cologne is over here, right? Yeah. He's trying to work on bacterium, interesting, for overall efficiency, dramatically improvement for, for the solar wafer sides. Okay, silver's goal is not what? It's not just fuel, but also high value commodities such as um, Interesting, I'm kind of, fuel is cheap because we fight wars over it. Drugs are high value. Like a vitamin or a drug. Okay, crazy stuff. 29.45, stop. Okay, so I am right now uh, gonna go into my map of the passage. Very difficult, very difficult science. In fact, it took me six minutes and 40 seconds to read. Six minutes, 40 seconds to read. Um, and it's not as bad as I thought. Six minutes, it's just that I, the previous one was so fast that this felt for, like it was taking forever. But anyway, it took me six minutes, 40 seconds to read. I'm about to get into my map of the passage. Here we go. I don't remember all these names, but there's Pamela Silver and somebody else, okay? And they made a bionic leaf. What's a bionic leaf? It's when you use a, bi a biological process 
along with an inorganic chemical process uh, in a leaf, and it can produce fuel in liquid form. Crazy stuff, apparently. Okay, so that's the first paragraph. Uh, second paragraph talks about the inorganic aspect of it, the thing that Nocera, DN, Daniel Nocera, developed years ago. He developed this inorganic leaf, uh, this artificial leaf, which can create a gas hydrogen, okay, which could be technically used for fuel. Gas hydrogen. Well, how did, how did, he, how did he make it? He put like this silicon wafer between two somethings, like a cell or I don't know, a photovoltaic, I don't know what the heck. Uh, I'm not good with science. But you put like a thing in between two other things, uh, and then they split the water and come up with oxygen on one side of it and then like um, hydrogen on the other side of it because somehow it like emulates uh, photosynthesis, I don't know, something crazy like that, okay? Uh, the problem though is that, now I'm, at, I'm close to the bottom of the left column, but the problem is that it, uh, what was it? Uh, oh yeah, it, it produces gas hydrogen, okay, which is where the bionic leaf comes in. Uh, by the way, I, there was this period, there was this part where it talked about how he was perfecting this over the last couple of years or decades or something like that, right? And so it's much more efficient than before, blah, 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 blah. okay? Uh, and then it says, the problem is that it results in a gas, which is hard to use for, for fuel. So then the bionic leaf comes in, this is at the bottom of the column, and, the, and so we talk about phase two where it takes the gas hydrogen, okay? Which then something, something with the, at the top right, something happens. Don't fully remember what happens, but then it turns into some sort of liquid isopropyl, isopropyl, iso something, which is kind of like ethanol, but it's not the same as ethanol, it's iso something. Okay, that's what happens at the top right. <laughs> you can tell I'm like a science genius. <laughs> uh, so that's the top right, and then we move into a new paragraph. This new paragraph is this big quotation, I think. The amazing thing about this is that because you can marry the two biology and the inorganic chemistry into one process, what happens is you can actually do something, and I forget that first something, but then after that, at the bottom of the paragraph, it says you can actually apply this to all sorts of things, not just fuels, okay? So this kind of foreshadows the ending, by the way. Then after that, oof, tough passage, yo. After that, we get some, some discussion about silver doing some sort of process and creating efficiency somehow. Oh no, it's all about two different groups that are like working on two different things. One of them is making them, oh, silver I think is, Pamela Silver's team is making it more efficient, uh, like the efficiency, the 5% efficiency of an algae, okay, which is, you know, way better than what it used to be, apparently. And then the other dude is working on some sort of bacterium that's gonna capture sunlight better, something like that. Okay, that's the ongoing research. The final paragraph then says, uh, yeah, and I know this is on my, it's in front of me, but I'm not looking at it. Also, it's too tiny for me to see. Uh, so I'm, I am doing all of this from memory. Uh, but the last paragraph says, Silver, her goal isn't to make this peon stuff, this cheap fuel stuff, okay? Fuel is cheap. She wants to make expensive things like vitamins, drugs. Pamela is our next Breaking Bad hero. The next Walter White. Okay, so that was <laughs> my map of the passage. Pretty damn good, if I may say so myself, for a literature guy. Uh, how was your map compared to mine? <laughs> All right. Now I'm about to get into the passage. There are a couple parts, obviously, I forgot in the map of the passage, so I didn't remember it perfectly. But honestly, I'm pretty happy with that map. Uh, let me get going on time. Three, two, one, let's go. Primary purpose of the passage is to um, the development, improvement of the bionic leaf 
development significance. Yep. Nope. 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 3005. First paragraph implies that it was motivated to address a problem. I don't remember this. What what problem? What problem? What problem? What problem? Energy sources with right. Developing world. <laughs> Hilarious, because the conclusion sounds like the, literally the opposite person. Yep, that's exactly it. 30, 35. Okay, this is uh, 9 through 11. 9 through 11. Okay, 30, 45. Okay, second paragraph uh, is to discuss the... Uh, not the, the artificial leaf. Yep. Okay, 3105. Moving on. Uh, by the way, guys, if you do ask questions, I will answer them when I can spit them out. The passage asks, indicates that the artificial leaf carries out which chemical process? Uh, splits water into... Hell yeah. I'm, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 3120. Which is why you should read, you should read the experiment design, man. This, you should know the details, which captures only 1% of the energy, okay? Which uh, uses, utilizes, yes, 31, 45. I hate it when this happens. Stop. I hate it when this happens. Why does it do that? I stopped the time just to fix this thing. It's, why does it do that? It's just like floats to the left. All right, starting time again. Three, two, one, let's go. Did I write down the time? Yeah, I did. Okay, uh, trick, 42, trick. This trick, what's the trick? I forgot the trick. I remember the trick. The trick. Through a trick of bioengineering. Oh, we uh, through a some sort of fancy mechanism of bioengineering through a clever technique because it's engineering technique. <laughs> okay. And that's 3 to 15. Cologne's remarks in the fifth paragraph primarily serve to implications, the actual impact, right? Praise the collaborative, hard work, spirit, testing, no, innovative potential. Exactly. Exact mundo. I'm not even going to double check. I actually am so sure of that one. Uh, as presented in the passage, uh, they make which assumption about the bio that is yet to be substantiated. I don't remember this, but it has to be, in the, it has to be on the right side. I feel like it has to be here. Uh, it has yet to be substantiated. It is yet to be substantiated. If you can use, then you open the door to these things. Hmm, tough. Okay, I'm gonna go process elimination. Don't I don't love it, but I have to. The efficiency can he No plants, they already did get there. Yeah, they they already got there. Other. Yeah, I think that's the one I was kinda of looking at right now. That's kinda of what I was predicting. Natural? No, I don't think that Ethanol? We never do a comparison with ethanol, but this is a double question with evidence. So 48, 40 to 60, but I'm looking at other than isopropanol. Isopropanol, right? If you can use enzymes for building chemicals, that's 56 to 57. Natural compounds that we rely on every day, 57 to 60. Okay. 56 to 60, if you can do this, if you can make these other chemicals, if you can make these other chemicals other than isopropanol, you can do all these other things. If you can do the, 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 the chemical, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not isopropanol. Okay, yeah, we're good. Perfecto. I think I am very happy right now. I'm actually under 35 minutes. Perfect. 
gives me 30 minutes for the remaining two passages plus any leftover time. Lutuli to the South African Congress of Democrats in 1958. Macmillan, South African par uh, Parliament, which is different. Nine, okay, so two years difference. At the time of these speeches, South Africa was in the process of transition from a colony to a republic. Okay, white mineral apartheid was president of the African National Congress and Macmillan, the Prime Minister of Britain, okay, was addressing the parliament. Whoa, charged stuff, very charged situation. I can imagine how spicy this gets. All right, those of us who are in the freedom struggle in this country have really only one gospel. What's this gospel? Democracy and freedom. If we are true to South Africa, our vision is democracy and freedom. Not democratic when only a third have rights and the rest have apartheid. It must end. It must end. Tribalism. Okay. We are far from democracy. Sometimes we have these assholes who use pretty phrases. Develop along our own lines. Okay, apartheid is separatism. My fellow white South Africans should be the first degree that is indebted to previous civilizations. Indebted. We're all connected. We don't develop on our own lines. Even the whites, <laughs> white, <laughs> we're indebted. Have the right to develop and to determine how to develop develop and determine how to develop freedom and self-determination I see okay uh, kind of hard but sure one might ask is this a vision of a democratic society or is it realizable is it practicable it is the germ is in everyone Freedom, not slavery. Okay. So I'm at 37.50. So we're talking about pretty fa separatism, and then yes, it's realizable. Okay. The wind of change. It's changing, and it's just a fact. Oh, so we might be on the same side. You understand this better. You're sprung from Europe, the home of nationalism. A nation, a new nation. National consciousness, okay. Which is now rising. And you are responsible for this. For its causes, The achievements of Western civilization is the reason for this. So you are indebted to the West. Oh, you are indebted to the West, which is crazy. Okay, that seems like not the same meaning as, as, the, as the first passage. Okay, and I'm kind of confused. I learned to apply lessons of both. Long experience, both of failure and success. Christianity and rule law. Our aim in both countries to raise not only the material standards, a society respects respects the rights. Oh, he's on the same side. They're on the same side. Okay. 
individual merit. Oh, very cautious development. We're talking about other countries now? A community. Become more of a community. And we have fellowship foster between us. Various... We're basically talking about, wow. Okay. 40, 15. And that is stop. Ugh. 4020, 4020. I'll just, I'll just change it to 4020 because. Okay, and what are, what are these? Ugh. Okay, I'll have to go through that later. I can't erase that for some reason, so. All right, guys. So here is my map of this passage. Yes, it was my first time. It was my first time reading it. Uh, you see these markings, it's, ignore them. Uh, I was just making a point to some other previous student. I vaguely remember it now, but I have actually never read this passage before. Okay. Here is my map of the passage. First passage, Mutuli, speaking to African National Congress. Uh, so... It's interesting, by the way, the setup is interesting. We have an African leader, a black African leader, talking to black Africans. And then we have a white British leader talking to white Africans, South Africans. Uh, so it's just an interesting setup. That's not that common to have these two kinds of passages, okay? But here we go. First passage, top. We only have one gospel, that's freedom and democracy. Africa has not been, South Africa has not been true to this gospel because it, is not, it cannot be truly democratic when only one-third of its people have any democratic rights. We're falling short of democracy, okay? That's the first, that's the top. It moves to a different paragraph, I think, where it says... Uh, What does it say? A different paragraph where it says, uh, oh, people have been banding about these nice little pretty terms. Oh, no, 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 no. The black Africans just develop on their own line. Okay. It's, it's supposed to be this persuasive, attractive idea that apartheid, that justifies apartheid, that justifies the separation between the black and the white South Africans. Okay, these pretty words. Oh, develop on your own lines. But the problem is, no society in history has ever developed on their own lines. You Europeans should know this, says Lutuli. You Europeans should know this because all, all of your accomplishments are indebted to Western civilization, to the previous accomplishments. Okay, then at the bottom of that left column, Lutuli moves on to say, I forget, he says something, but I forget, okay? Because it was a weird transition for me. Like, I didn't fully understand that transition, okay? But he swings back around from Europe to talking about Africa, but I don't know, remember what that content was at the bottom left, okay? And at the very bottom left, and moving to the top right, Lutuli then says, is it feasible? Is our vision of a de de democratic uh, South Africa even realistic? And he says, yes, because the germ of freedom is in every man, every single individual. We're all thirsting for it. We're all fighting for it. Okay? Um, it's not a very concrete argument. It's more of a rhetorical argument, but there it is. That's the f map of the first passage. Here's my map of the second passage. Second passage, we have the British Prime Minister, forget his name, speaking to South Africa, and he says, hey, uh, as you know, and this is the crazy thing, the first, I think this is the very first thing he says. He says, uh, we are all indebted. <laughs> he says the same thing that Lutuli was saying. And I actually, when I first read it, I wasn't sure if he was going to use it the same way. But you guys have created a new nation and you are indebted to this idea. Of this, and this, now you, there is a rising African nationalism. 
And these have come from where? From the accomplishments? They have their causes where? The causes are from Europe. Because Europe has come up with the idea of nationalism. It's the birthplace of nationalism. And so this is all a positive thing, okay? According to, I didn't know it at first when I was reading it because I couldn't tell which direction the um, speaker was going to go, but it's a positive thing. And so you are indebted, which proves the point from the bottom left of the first passage, okay? Then, then he goes on to say something. A long paragraph. Uh, the second paragraph is pretty long, but it took me a while to figure out at the end that he was actually on the side of the on the same side as the Tuli. But basically, through that second paragraph, we what was it? Uh, what does the second paragraph say? It says something about uh, people. Uh, you're Africa. Equality. Basically, like democratic rights for everybody, for every individual. Basically. And then at the final paragraph, there's this sort of like throwaway thing, but it's, I mean, it's still a useful argument. In other countries, because the British Empire was a very vast empire, in other countries, we um, have been trying to increase fellowship and brotherhood between people of different races. He doesn't say the word races, but he means races. So he's kind of very, very, very cautiously and gently chastising the South African parliament. Very softball. Okay, uh, all right, so that was my map of the two passages. How was your map? All right, I'm about to get into the questions now. Okay, ignore this. I can't erase it right now. Actually, I, might, I, can, I can try. I can try to erase it, right? Over here. I want to because it bothers me. Yes, this is it. Cool, erase, erase, okay? Because, and just for anyone who's coming in a little later, I have not taken this test before. I have not, I mean, maybe I've seen, the, I, maybe I looked at these questions before because I was using it to uh, demonstrate some points to some students that I, uh, a student that I was teaching, okay? But this is my first time reading these questions and these passages. Uh, like I had never read that passage before. So I might have read 32, 33 before, but not in a way that um, like would have retained, that I would have retained any information in my head. Okay, so now I'm back to this. Here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. Lutuli argues that South Africa will only become a fully democratic when only black citizens, only when, only when, only when black citizens enjoy the same rights, yes. That's 4035. It's the rights. We're talking about rights right now. Uh, nice and pretty phrases, primary language is being disingenuously to justify, to no, not rectify, to justify, to obscure, sure, an indefensible government system that works, not undermine critics, not to depict, yeah, it's to justify apartheid. It's to justify apartheid, which is B. When Lutuli describes the vision of a democratic society in South Africa, it's realized what he means, he, this, it can be achieved. Oh, achieved, that's correct, 41.10. Okay. Macmillan implies that the growth of national consciousness is indebted. No, it's indebted, indebted, inevitable, it cannot be stopped, it's awkward. What? Cannot be stopped? Maybe it cannot be stopped. Oh, as a fact. Yeah, yeah cannot be stopped. It's kind of awkward, honestly, but still. It's a, I mean, I don't think that's like an amazing point to make SAT College Board, but whatever. Um, the, uh, that's uh, 45 through 49, 45 through 49, okay? And, oops, Mac Macmillan presents his argument by uh, talking about values. Uh, does, he, does he, hang on, how does he present his argument? Of course you understand this better. I'm sure we will agree, okay, shared values. I'm just rereading this second, this second paragraph, or the third paragraph, third paragraph actually. It's kind of common values is really the thing. It's assuming, really, not really asserting, but sure. Leadership, 
greater challenges, difficulties. Oh my god, that's pretty easy just through process elimination. But kind of wish. Okay, asserting. Asserting is kind of an awkward word for this, but uh, 60 through 61 helps. Okay, okay, no, no, but here, there we go. We have an actual assertion. Uh, 65 to 68. That's the most clear assertion. Yep, that's exactly it. 43.05. Lutuli would, for saying all individuals have a share in political. Yeah, I would totally agree. By arguing that, no, that, no. Uh, oh, yeah, as long as apartheid, yeah. Okay, 43.30. Moving on. So which statement about freedom? Freedom is uh, necessary for everybody. Uh, I guess this sounds right. Ooh. Okay, we don't talk about... No, we don't talk about nationalism in passage one. Justice versus democracy. Democracy cannot exist. I'm going to go with A, really, but let's just double check. Justice, our judgment right of justice. Where did freedom come in? Where's freedom? I can't, I know where freedom is in the in the first passage, but where's freedom in the second passage? Oh, I see. Freedom. Our judgment of right and wrong and of justice is rooted in Christianity and rule of law as the basis of uh, free society. As a free. The rights of individuals. Okay, he doesn't really talk about democracy here. Yep, so he only talks about justice. So that's 44, 55. And I'm just double checking right now. Welcome to the server, by the way, Susco. <laughs> if you are watching this, I see you. The speeches of Lutuli and Macmillan differ how? Lutuli's talking about apartheid. Macmillan is talking about, hey, we're like the big brother. Okay, so we're like, kind of follow our example. We're like the same side, right? Uh, The people will initiate social change. Do we get that? Realizable. It's because we... Because that makes some sense. Yeah, that makes sense because he is talking to a bunch of, you know, black South Africans who don't have power, so... That seems right. Only the first step is... Whereas we don't even talk about apartheid specifically is an ultimate... Collective versus individual. Nope. Okay. That's 46.15. All right. Moving on to the final passage. Here we go. 46.15. That only took me uh, 11 minutes. So I'm real good. I have 19 minutes. The story of Earth. So we're talking geology. The first 4.5, the first 4.5 billion years from Stardust. Oh no, we're talking about, okay, astronomy, Stardust, and geology. Infrared absorption. Apparently that's connected to dryness. Moon rocks from all six landing sites. So we have telescopes, we have rocks with no traces of water. Okay, this parenthesis is a little funny. Finding of unrusted, unrusted iron metal. Whoo! 
Ooh, a conventional wisdom might be wrong. And then we get something interesting. Let's, what is this interesting thing? Lead me, Hazen. Lead me. In 1994. <gasps> the Clementine spacecraft mission. We had radar measurements that were consistent with water ice. Okay. Four years later, 1998, see the Lunar Prospector 98, okay, employed neutron spectroscopy, hydrogen atoms. Still, they pointed in plan. Then into October 2009. So we have Atlas 09. Smash the upper side of the map into one of the moon's craters, the Cabeus Crater near the, we should get this name, Cabeus Crater, and scrutinize the plume of impact debris for signs of HO2. And yes, the dust had some H. Oop, sorry guys. Ah! HO2. Three back-to-back -back articles in science that same October. Three articles in science. We have water on the moon. Eric Hari, Eric Hari, using an ion microprobe. We are using lots of different technologies here, okay? Overwhelming. New technology. Hari's team has revisited the colorful glass beads collected during the 70s. Okay, this is talking about, it's talking about this, okay? On paper, this would be so much faster, holy crap. Okay, PDF, way suckier. Science of water, that can, but the, okay. But the microprobe was able to find things at the scale of a millionth of an inch. The cores have 64 parts per million. Most has evaporated from the surfaces, but the core remains. However, based on the same of my remaining water, please calculate that the original water content may have been as may have been as high as 70, 750. Okay, now we're comparing this to 46. That's like volcanic rocks. Okay, so there could have been volcanoes, enough water for volcanoes. Must still be locked inside the interior. The moon formed by excavation of the primordial mantle during a collision? What the hell? Sure, but anyway. Our planet's deep interior also has... Okay, I'm confused, but sure. Uh, lots of water, apparently. Lots of water. In both. Water concentration in lunar glass breed green number five. Green number five. The closer we get to the core, we get the more you get. Up to 30, which is not the same... This is less than 46, okay? This is less than 46. This is not the sexiest one. All right, stop. 51, 55. 51, 55, here is my map of the passage. Here we go. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna change the page so I can't see. Here we go, here we go, here we go. So, conventional wisdom holds that the moon is drier than bone. Dry, dry as bone, but it's actually drier than bone. Whatever. Okay? It's just a little joke. Uh, and then there's uh, some s examples of studies that proved back in the day that the moon was dry. 
the one that I remember is the one with uh, glass beads, and they analyzed with 1970s technology the glass beads, uh, and then they couldn't find any water. Okay, so that was what I remember. I think there was like one or two more. Okay, but there's a couple different experiments that were carried out in the past that kind of showed that. I think three experiments that showed that there was no water. Then, second paragraph. I like how this guy writes. I actually remember even his words, word for word, or almost word for word. It's like, funny thing about conventional wisdom, though, he says. Uh, Hazen says. He says, Hazen is his name. Uh, what was it? People will continue believing this one thing, but then somebody will come along, challenge it, and then something really interesting will come out, is what he says at the top of the second paragraph. So then he goes into three experiments or three studies uh, that came out. The first one, don't remember. Second one, don't remember. The third one was interesting. Third one, they took the atlas in 2008 or something they took like the atlas the upper part of the atlas some sort of spaceship kind of thing and they smashed it into the moon and then they collected the dust and then they found water <laughs> which is like the kind of crazy i don't remember the first two okay but there were three of them and in october when they did that uh three back-to-back -back, three back-to-back -back articles in science came out about that uh sort of definitively pr saying in the science, uh, in science, the magazine, it came out uh, saying, hey, there is water on Earth, okay? I don't remember the first two experiments though for some reason. So maybe it's just because I'm getting tired since I'm on my fifth passage now, uh, but I'm like, for, my map of the passage is getting weaker compared to my previous ones. Uh, then, I, I, oh, then we get the ion spectroscopy, I think. Okay, this crazy new technology that I think I'm remembering correctly. Uh, I think this is more recent, it's maybe like 2014 or something like that, where they picked up, they scooped up those beads from the 1970s and they re examined them with this cutting edge technology that can measure things at a millionth of a centimeter or something crazy like that. Uh, a millionth of a something, and not a centimeter, but something. Uh, this is at the top right now. We're at the top right of the passage. And then what they found was that, indeed, the, the rims, the outer uh, surfaces of these beads are very dry. A few parts per million in terms of HO2. H2O, H2O, not HO2. <laughs> uh, but the cores of these beads had like 46 parts per million. Pretty high. And historically, if you kind of imagine the evaporation of the water from the beads, then that suggests that actually it used to have somewhere in the range, in, back in the past, the moon used to, these beads from the moon used to have somewhere in the range of like 300, 350 parts per million, which is enough water to create volcanoes. That's the second to last paragraph. Here's the final paragraph of the passage. And so if volcanoes, if volcanoes, um, if there was enough water to create volcanoes and magma and all that stuff, then that suggests that because the moon was formed in this way where it shares like the inside core or something with the earth, not only will the core of the moon have hella water, but the core of the earth will have hella water, apparently. Okay, so that is my map of the passage. I would say it's, uh, it's not as good as the previous ones, okay? But I think that's pretty freaking solid. Uh, how was your map compared to mine? All right, I'm about to get in and finish off the final passage. After I do the final passage, within 65 minutes, uh, I have 13 minutes left still. I'll probably go back and double check a couple questions, okay? Uh, just to, just to you know, uh, get 52 out of 52 instead of 51 out of 52, right? Uh, 
<laughs> we'll see what happens, right? But I'm gonna go back, double check some questions uh, with the remaining time. If I finish before 65 minutes, then I'll just stop. I'll just I'll just stop time. But if I finish at 65 minutes, I'll, uh, but sometimes, but it's possible that I might go all the way until 65 minutes. Right now, I'm at 51:55. Let's go finish this off, and then I'll score myself and do any Q and A for people. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's go. According to the author, challenging conventional wisdom, uh, per, not usually, uh, sometimes leads to significant yes. I'm very confident, but I'm just gonna just double check. Um, and once in a while, that's sometimes. Once in a while is sometimes. According to the passage, oh, hang on, that's fifty-two fifteen. The Clementine, nineteen ninety-four Clementine. Radar measurements consistent with water rice. Radar measurements. Single flyby. Radar measurements. Single flyby. Prelimin yeah, oh my god, I can't believe I missed that. I didn't even notice. Okay. Um, maybe I was zoning out a little bit. I don't know what happened there, but... Yeah, I just like did not see it. It can reasonably be inferred from the passage that the idea of the moon was completely aired was reinforced because reinforced? Reinforced? Did we get reinforcing? The unrusted thing. Cause there's piece Well, how about reinforced? I guess sort of inertia? We're willing to challenge them. It's backwards. Oh, it could be explained. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 53, 30. They came up with other explanations. Sure. And they come up with other explanations, uh, especially over here, um, 23 to 25. Okay, that's 53, 45. Just double check. Yep, that was 15 seconds, bros. Uh, resolve, 44 resolve, most nearly, hang on, 44 is down here. But their detection cap capacities were no match for the, the ability to resolve what? Resolve measurements at a scale of a millionth of an inch, okay? To resolve measurements at a scale, resolve measurements, resolve measurements, to resolve measurements, to, to, to distinguish between measurements at a scale of a millionth, that makes sense. Uh, I actually couldn't predict one here. It was, that was hard to predict, um, but yeah, um, that makes, I had to plug in, so I don't like doing process elimination just to get my answer, but for this one, I had to do it. 54, 30. Just typing it is taking too much time. 59 drive, most nearly means. More than enough, a lot of water and more than enough water to drive volcanism. To cause, to, to, pro, to coerce, to fuel? Yeah, fuel is kind of metaphorical, but works. Yeah, it's the only one uh, that works. Uh, interesting. <laughs> tricky, tricky. I feel like some kids will struggle on that one. Implies that any water present on the moon, currently present on the moon, is probably way, it's inside the core? No, glass beads. Primary source on Earth? Maybe. Primary source on Earth. Hmm. Yeah, that's basically true. Um because we have no idea about this volume thing. We have no idea about the form thing. And that comes in, um, oh my God, 60 to six, 65 to 67 specifically, 65 to 67. That is 56, 15. How long did that take me? Uh, those two questions took me one minute and 10 seconds. At what distance from the core is the water concentration? 
15. What distance from the core? 15. 15 is here, so the distance is uh, 105. Okay? And based on the, what's the reasonable conclusion about lunar glass bead? Um, at no point, um, okay. I'm just looking at this. So we, we ranging from, we're ranging from 12 to 30. So 15 to, Yeah, that makes sense. We don't know anything about time. 57.30. We don't know about change in time, change over time. Which claim from the passage? The figure best supports which claim from the passage about the core. Hang on, where are we? Uh, well, sorry, I'm just navigating awkward. So the core, 48 through 51, 48 through 51. That's correct. That one's awkwardly easy. Uh, 05. All right, now I'm going to green. Green is after I'm done with my first pass through, my first take. I'm just using my remaining time. I have 11 minutes and 30 seconds to just review any questions that I felt awkward about. Here we go. Housed most nearly means at 38. Um, I can also take questions here, but no one's asking any questions, so moving on. Housed. It was housed, right? Covered in 15 means um, covered a finger hole makes no sense. 26, 26, she can make her, they moved, to... no, it makes no sense. Opened, 28, opened the flute, makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, I kind of knew that that would happen, but I just wanted to double check. Hold on, I should write my time down. My time was 58, 55. Okay. What's his awkwardness? Stop the time real quick just to fix this awkward thing over here. Um, okay. Resuming time, three, two, one, let's go. Givers of emotional support, reported increased well-being. I'm good with that, no questions here, but what's this? Oh, right, who perform altruistic acts, hold beliefs about the effect of these acts. They hold beliefs about the effects of these acts and these beliefs are what's causing them. Boost your mood health because it's beliefs that you're doing. See, doing something significant would not normally be considered an effect. But it's not feedback, and it's definitely not brain chemistry, just merely thinking. This is badly... Ugh, I don't think, I think that's poorly worded, because the answer choice is right there. And all the other ones are going to be very weird for... Benefit because... Okay, did I, and then did I double check 3 to 8? Yeah, I did double check all those. So, very weird, man. Very weird. 60, 15, moving on. Strange wording. I don't like that wording. Uh, I didn't circle anything for this one. Okay, I didn't, so moving on. And I didn't circle anything here. And now, I'm just, I know on the real test, I would actually use the extra time, okay, but for now, I feel pretty confident. I didn't circle anything, so I'm just gonna stop time now. Okay, 60, 40, I have four minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Let me now score myself, because I'm pretty confident on all of these. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go into, and yes, now I'm, I've stopped time, 
So you can ask questions and I'll answer them as I see them. Uh, I will be prioritizing going through these questions. If you guys do ask any questions, uh, going through questions passes by passage. I'm not going to jump around and go linearly. Okay, here we go. Uh, first passage, let's go. Uh, I need to open up March 2019. Give me a sec. All right, all right. Question one. I chose A, B, C. Hey, what happened here? Oh, did it? Okay, whatever. So I chose A, B, C, B. A, B, C, B are correct. I chose A, A, D. A, A, D are correct. C, D, D. C, D, D are correct. I got 10 out of 10. All right. Any questions for passage one? Nope. Moving on. Sorry, let me just deal with something on my screen real quick. Just clean up my screen so I can see things f faster. Oof. Oh, lag. I hope my stream hasn't been lagging. Has my stream been lagging at all? Let me check my computer situation. Is my stream lagging? Just, uh, if you are watching at the moment, uh, just let me know if there's like a weird lag with the stream. No, it looks like it's okay. Okay. Whoa. Okay. So I'm going to 11 to 13, 11 to 13, C, D, A. I chose C, D, wait. Oh, sorry, wrong page. CDA are correct. CDA are correct. Then I go, got D, B, A, C, C. D, B, A, C, C are correct. Then I got B, D, B. B, D, B are correct. That's 11 for 11. Nice. All right. A, D, C. A, D, C are correct. B, A, C, B, A, C are correct. A, D, B, D, A, D, B, D are correct. That sounds, that looks like it's 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Okay, 32 to 34, A, B, C, A, B, C are correct. C, A, A, C, A, A are correct. D, B, A, B, D, B, A, B are correct. That's 10 out of 10. Okay, finally, we're at 41, 42 to 52, that's 11, right? Okay, good. So we got D, C, C, D, C, C are correct. D, A, B, A, D, A, B, A are correct. D, D, C, D, 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 C, D, correct. Oh my God. It's been a long time since I got a 52 out of 52 on a stream. <laughs> it was making me insecure. Ah, uh, uh, it feels good. Cause I literally, I have never seen these. I remember not a single question ever. Um, Cause I didn't, and I've never read any of these passages. So, oh, it's so refreshing to get a 52 out of 52. Feel really happy right now. Oh man. And given how garbage I felt about the Discord, uh, about the whole Discord situation, uh, this is just giving me, it's just putting me back on my feet right now. Okay guys, well, it looks like no one's asking any questions, so, uh, for anybody who watches this in a future 
uh, viewing. Uh, I don't know what the right noun for that is, but when, whenever you watch this after the stream, if you ever have any questions on any given uh, on any passage, any part of the passage, or any question, just drop a line number, drop a question number, uh, and ask me, what's up? Okay, what are you struggling with? Okay, so uh, preferably you don't, preferably you uh, kind of phrase, you know, what's in your head and what you're actually thinking. Uh, if you do that in the comments, you know, and if I can see that you're putting a little effort into thinking through your comments, uh, I will commensurately reward you with my own effort as well. So, uh, you know, that's just something to hold on to, uh, just to think about. But leave any comments that you have in the comment section below. By the way, guys, if you are finding these streams helpful, I am curious how it is helpful for you guys, what, what kind of changes you've noticed, what kinds of changes you've noticed in yourself as you've uh, adopted my strategy or adapted my strategy or just by watching me, watching someone else solve it, like what, what has changed with you. I'm curious uh, what you guys are, how you guys are actually watching this video and how you're benefiting. So let me know about some of that stuff as well. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, mentioned, quote unquote, more than mentioned, but as I mentioned in the beginning, I've been having problems with Discord, uh, but you can join the temporary server, which I left the link to in the description. So please join and uh, let's rebuild this. Finally, if you hit that like and uh, subscribe button, you will let Google, uh, Google, you will let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. Uh, let the algorithm kind of stretch out a little bit with my, with my streams. And uh, also, you'll help the channel get to 500 subscribers. And when we get to 500 subscribers, I'll be able to do community posts, which I'm really looking forward to. So if you want to be able to engage with my channel a little bit more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You'll help me out. And hopefully, you'll help yourself out. Okay, final word, everybody, always remember that the SAT is just one measure of your academic capabilities. It's not the end-all be-all. So keeping that in mind, please focus on just growing as a person, as a student, as a thinker, as a writer, as an artist, as a creator, whatever. Grow. I hope you grow today and tomorrow and forevermore. Grow every day. I'll see you guys in the next one.